I'm Dr. Anil Godey, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at Fertility Plus. Today, again, after a long break of almost 18 months, we come back to get one of the finest courses in reproductive medicine and fertility coming back to Dubai, 12th to the 16th of November, 2021. Whilst in the pandemic, we moved this course online, there is nothing better than face-to-face -face teaching where we answer your questions and where we try and look at the nitty gritty of reproductive medicine and improve what we know and how we can treat our patients. So you know, let me tell you a few things about the fertility course that you're going to run. It's from the 12th to the 16th of November, 2021. We run this course with the IBC, which is a world leader in offering courses. It's one of the longest courses being run and has done very well in terms of its reviews. And one of the commonest things which we often try to do is improve the clinical care that you are able to give and also equally improve the outcomes, improve the chance of pregnancy. It's me, I'm joined by my colleague Amit Shah, Sachin Kulkarni, and Dr. Shri, who is an excellent embryologist who will help you to understand clinical embryology. Now, from the 12th to the 19th, we do four to five days of extensive discussion, teaching, debates, challenging issues. We look at the basis of reproduction, but more importantly, we understand the basics which are needed to improve your stimulation cycles, your treatments, your use of clomiphene, your IUI treatments and IVF. We explore how to use oral agents like clomiphene, letrozole, tamoxifen. We also explore the alternative regimes of when you increase the dose, when you use the step-up regimes, how you decide on which protocols to use in trying to make these treatments affordable to your patients. Equally, when do you extend the doses? And all these minor changes, which have come over the past five to 10 years, that's what will help you to learn. We also concentrate on the first stage of assisted reproduction, IUI treatments, how to improve IUI treatments, how to use tablets, injections, as well as combining both of these, the use of ovarian drilling. How do we treat polycystic ovaries as well as hypohypoc conditions? Can we change that? Can we improve the outcomes in those cases? We will talk an entire day on looking at your IVF protocols. And what we're not going to tell you is, we're not going to give you three or four protocols. What we're going to explore is, how do we get to understanding what protocol we use? How do we decide based on the Goody triangle and the antral follicle count, the AMH, the relationship, the changing of the antral follicle count? How do we decide at what dose do we start this stimulation? How do we alter stimulation? What do we know by FSS threshold? What do we know by LH ceiling? Can we manage stimulation better? I know many of you, you all will be doing IVF. And what we are trying to say is, can we explore and make you think a bit more differently? Can we use oral agents and test the stimulation? Can we try and save patients money as well as can we change the outcome? We also look at the difficult cases. What happens with PCOS stimulation? How can we prevent ovarian hyperstimulation? But equally, how do we get more mature eggs? How do we avoid the, the risk of having immature eggs and having a poor stimulation? Challenging issues such as poor responders and using that new concept of chasing the antral follicle, trying to find out how you can help some poor responders by just thinking a bit more differently. Finally, we look at thin endometriums. What can we do to it different? What can we understand and how can we change our, our protocols? With Sachin, we explore the challenges that are presented in the subcontinent. 
where drugs are different, where stimulation regimes are different, where women respond differently. We also look at fibroids, how to remove fibroids, which, which fibroids to remove and which fibroids to leave behind. We explore the complex issue of adenomyosis and its implications on fertility treatments and assessment. We also will be discussing between eight to 10 cases where we'll be asking you your opinions, but also we'll be able to tell you what is going on and what is changing in those discussions. And we aim to revise the entire four days of assessment and teachings in those case discussions. Finally, you have an embryologist like Dr. Shri. I've known him for more than 20 years, an excellent teacher, and he brings embryology to clinicians. It's important for you to know so that you can try and change the results, but equally offer different treatments. You can troubleshoot your laboratory. You can learn about procedures which your embryologists are doing, but equally go back and tell the embryologist, I need to have quality controls. Look at audit and traceability. These are things which we want to inculcate in you so that that type of quality control helps you to improve your labs. Often we say, we didn't learn everything, no, but we want to make it to start thinking a bit differently. It's that thinking process once changed, you'll enjoy the, the phenomenal part of reproductive medicine. Remember the limited spaces. We can't, this is not a large conference. We can't take hundreds of people. It is very much an intense face-to-face -face teaching that goes on. Don't miss it. It's come after 18 months. The pandemic has been extremely challenging. Again, email info at ibcme.com or anita at ibcme.com. You'll get a response and join us. Join us for this fascinating four days of teaching, learning, and debate. Thank you very much.